Hey and welcome, I'm Solo and this is ZN Gaming. In this video, I'll be going over how to update your MSI motherboard. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. In this example, I will be using an MSI X570 Gaming Plus, but if you're not using the same motherboard, this process will be the same for most MSI motherboards. If you're not sure of what motherboard you have or what BIOS version you're on, you can restart your computer right quick and spam the delete key. After spamming the delete key, it should boot into the BIOS. It's going to look like this here on the X570, but if it looks a little bit different, the process is going to be the exact same. All we're going to do is look here for the information. So we're going to check for the motherboard and our BIOS version and our date. So we've updated this in 2024 and our motherboard is the MPG X570 Gaming Plus. We already knew this, but this is how you're gonna check. So if you're not sure of what motherboard that you have, this is gonna be the easiest way for you to go figure it out. In the older MSI BIOS, you will have to look for the CMI information and it will give you the vendor name and information. So once you know the motherboard name, just write it down. It's gonna be easiest to write down the MPG X570 Gaming Plus. This is just going to make it easier for us later when we're searching for the BIOS. After that, we're just going to click on the X button. After you click the X, if you made any changes, it's just going to ask you to make sure that you made these here changes before you click yes. If you didn't make any of these changes, you can click no and not save anything that you've done in here. So if you were just checking the BIOS and you didn't mean to click anything, you can click no to make sure that none of this here takes effect. We're just going to click on yes. Once your computer loads back into Windows, the next thing we're going to need to do is go to the MSI website to download the BIOS and drivers. For this, you can just jump over into Google and type in the MSI X570 Gaming Plus. This is going to lead you to the MSI website site and it's going to lead you to the specific drivers so we're just going to click on this one here that's as easy as it is make sure it's the official msi website that you're getting the drivers from and from here it's going to load up into the specifications you can scroll through this here but for us we're just going to go over here to the support tab scroll down now it should be on the firmware and bios by default but if it's on drivers or utilities just click on the firmware and bios now we're going to scroll down and see that there's a couple versions here available we're just going to click the download after it's downloaded we're going to right click on it click extract all and click extract. It's just gonna make another folder here. We're just gonna give this here a close. We're gonna leave this here open and we're gonna close down the website. We no longer need it. Now for the next part, we're gonna need a USB drive. So just one second here while I plug one in. When you plug the USB drive in, it should load up automatically. This is going to make it super easy. We should still have the downloads open. So over here, we're just going to grab this here folder without the zipper on it, and we're going to drag it onto our USB drive. Now, the only thing we need to remember is the 7C37. This number is going to let us know that we're clicking on the correct file once we get into the BIOS. But once that's done, we just need to close this here out, and we're going to have to restart the computer again. Okay, once the BIOS loads up, all we need to do is go down here to the side and find the M flash utility now if this here is an advanced mode like if you go to easy mode and click f7 in easy mode you'll be able to just go down here and you'll be able to find the m flash utility in this here location so if your bios looks a little different and you're not in the advanced mode you can find the m flash utility right here and give it a click here as well we're going to go back to the advanced mode or i mean we're going to go back to the easy mode and we're just going to go down here and click on the m flash utility System will auto reboot and enter flash mode. Do you want to continue to flash mode? Yes. Now this is just going to boot into the utility and we'll start the installation from there. Okay, once it enters flash mode, now I made sure to remember that it's 7C37 that we needed to look for because I had more than one drive in here. This here has two USB drives in it. And as you can see, clicking back and forth, this is the one we're looking for. This is the folder that we had. We're just going to give it a click. And inside of it's going to be another file that's the same name. We're going to give it a click. And the last one's going to be the AP1. We're going to give that one a click and click yes. Now that was a little bit of traveling. I'll click no here. That was a little bit of traveling. But if you put the folder in the exact same way I did by just dragging it, it's just going to let you know what one it is by telling you the 7C37. That's the small number associated with your BIOS so finding it's the easiest way and clicking on it this here number and here's the same thing it's E7C37 so we know this here's the correct one we're just gonna click on it and click yes now this is gonna go through the install process this is gonna take a different amount of time for each different board so the time it takes is gonna vary it's probably a good time to go grab a coffee though it's gonna take a couple of minutes if it happens to slow down or look like it freezes on a certain percentage don't get worried it will most likely just hang there for a minute before it passes it this can happen to anywhere from from one to three minutes. Any past three minutes though, I would start worrying about it being frozen permanently, but do not restart your machine. Definitely let it wait for 10 to 20 minutes 
just to make sure that you don't interrupt the install process. Also make sure that you don't have a power outage or anything like that there. Do it at a time that's good for you and also at a time where you won't have to worry about it. Like don't do it in the middle of a storm when you have to worry about your power flickering. If you do interrupt the installation, you may have problems. So definitely keep that in mind when you get started. Make sure you pick a good day and a good time. Now usually when it loads up for the very first time, it's gonna reset your BIOS to scratch. So there is a few things in your BIOS that you may wanna go back into and set like your RAM speeds and stuff like that. So there is a few things that we're gonna definitely jump back into the BIOS and check out. Okay, and after you do the BIOS update, if it happens to restart twice and then just load directly into Windows, don't worry. What we wanna do right now is restart and go back into the BIOS and change a few settings. So let's just give a quick restart here again. Make sure to spam the delete so we can get back into the BIOS. Okay, once it loads back up into the BIOS, we're going to be in easy mode. To turn on the AXMP, you should just need to click here, but unfortunately, I have um, server RAM in here, so, so I've got some ECC memory in here, which is not supported by the XMP profile. But if you have supported RAM, this here should be lit up, and you should be able to click on it. As you can see, there's no profile here at all. Um, that might be something with just here the X570 model of board. But I'm pretty sure this here RAM does not have any supported XMP profiles at all because it's ECC. But if you have some, you'll just need to click here and pick profile 1 or 2. Usually profile 2 is the higher performance one and I suggest clicking it and restarting. In the easy mode or the advanced mode, uh, you can just click on the OC and you should be able to go down through here and you will be able to see where it says OC mode is expert. We should be able to go down through here where it says DRAM frequency is on auto. We should be able to go through here and select whatever speed that we have for rated RAM. So when you bought the RAM, whatever's written on the side is its rated speed. It's usually by default 2133 or whatever the default is, is usually quite a bit lower than the rated speed. But if you look on the package or on the side of the RAM, you want to make sure that it's set to your rated speed. So if you have 3200 hertz RAM, you want to make sure that it's set to 3200 in the BIOS. So if it does not give you an XMP profile, you can select the speed. Just make sure that you stay within the rated spec so that you don't have stability issues with your system. So definitely keep that in mind when you're selecting your RAM. We're going to leave this stock for this here because this here is my server. But as you can see, the auto is going to set it to 2666. You definitely want it to be at 3200 if it's 32 200 rated RAM. After that again, we're just going to restart. It's going to ask you to save the settings, click yes, and now it's just going to boot back into Windows. Once Windows is booted back up, you'll know everything is complete. If you made it to this year's stage, everything went smooth, but that's it for this one here. I just wanted to do a quick BIOS update for the MSI motherboard X570. I hope this year helped you out. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comment below. And if you like or found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching. Bye!